Hi, I'm JD, and I moved from Alaska to Portugal after I paid $15,000 to buy this old house that had sat empty for years. And now I'm renovating it on a budget, focusing on traditional and sustainable methods, and welcoming you to follow along in the process. Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, this week's episode is painting and sanding, so pretty self-explanatory, so here's the video. So I gave the rest of the wall a little bit harder scrape to kind of smooth it out, even it out, and I actually really like the way it looks, but I don't think I could replicate that intentionally. But before I get started painting, I did want to address the moisture situation that caused the paint to peel off because there were several comments about it. So in the small bedroom, the cause of the moisture problem was pretty obvious. And I even figured out what the issue was in the kitchen and the living room. But this one didn't seem to have any obvious causes. Outside of this wall is the street. And I thought the exterior was a concrete render, but it's, plas it's slime plaster, so that's not the problem. And then on this side is the neighbor's property, and it's just like an entryway. There's just a covered area that's like a tool storage, so there's not even rain getting on that. And I don't think it's an issue coming from the ground, cause, because this part of the house seems like it has a concrete foundation. And it could just be what the floor beams are set into. But even in the winter when it rains a lot, um, this hasn't been damp or anything. So my guess would be that there is something previously that was causing the issue that isn't there anymore. The houses on this side and that side are both new construction, so there could I don't know it was there before, so it could have been so it could have been something that was causing rainwater to build up over here or something. So that's one thought. And then the other idea is that since it seems like it starts at the window and kind of goes down, the other thought is that it's rainwater from the window that was that is coming in from the windowsill and getting into the wall. Because I'm the one that bricked up the window when I got the house, it was just completely open. So, so any rain and water would have just came straight in. And the floor is not really damaged at all, so I think it did all just get caught by the windowsill and that probably is the most likely. But in any case, it doesn't seem like it's a problem anymore, so I'm just gonna assume that it's not an issue and if it does happen again, then I'll have to do some more searching to figure out what the cause is. But I don't think it will be an issue anymore. Fingers crossed. And one side note for the British people, y'all use damp as a noun and I don't know what that means. Like the channels I've seen of British people here and in Spain and other places will talk about damp as a noun, but they'll, which I thought meant moisture, but then they'll also say moisture, so, so I don't exactly know what that means because in the US, damp is only an adjective. So when someone says it, I'm still just assuming they're talking about moisture, but, but if that is not the case, would a British person please explain? Thanks.
So while the paint's drying, I'll go ahead and take the doors off so I can get the paint off. So I bought this heat gun hoping it would make getting the paint off the doors and stuff easier. And it did work, but it was a very slow process. And I was hoping it would be cleaner than using a bunch of sandpaper and getting dust everywhere, but I had to do it outside because of the heat. And the wind and the gun itself was blowing the pieces of paint everywhere all over the yard, so it wasn't really very clean at all. I tried a few of the different attachments, but none of them seemed to work any better. So after going to three different hardware stores to get the right sandpaper, I tried using the sander and it's way faster than the heat gun. I was kind of concerned it would tear up the wood too much. I thought it would be really slow and like gum up the sandpaper and everything, but it doesn't seem to be the case. And that was about two seconds of work. I had never actually used a sander that you can attach a vacuum to before, so I didn't know how nice they actually were. Um, but it was really nice not having to deal with any dust. And since the vacuum pulls away everything, the sandpaper itself stays in good shape for way longer, and you don't have to replace it constantly.
So we got this thing that goes in a drill for stripping paint. It says it's for hardwood and this is pine, so I'll do a little test to make sure it doesn't eat away the wood. And I'll try it out to get in this all this little area. So it actually did work pretty good, and I'll just go ahead and use it on the rest of the wood. So as far as the painting goes, I haven't done the final coat yet. Um, the plan is to do like a light yellow color, like kind of how the small bedroom was. And I'm going to try to do that with turmeric, adding that to the whitewash and see how that works. But I wanted to wait on that because all the dust from sanding and I still need to stain and varnish the wood. So if I do get any of that on the paint, it'll all get covered up by the final layer. And I wasn't sure how bad the sanding would be, but luckily it does all just vacuum off pretty easily. So that's all for this week. Coming up we'll be making a homemade borate treatment for the woodworms and homemade wood stain from black walnut. So thanks for watching and I'll see y'all next week. Ciao.